I've been staring so long at these pictures of you that I almost believe that they're real. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people know me from the tattoo world and from like makeup and all this stuff. But, um, but the, the truth is that music has always been my biggest inspirational, you know, force, uh, throughout my life. You know, I don't think a lot of people know, like I was classically trained in piano since I was five, you know, we were really poor growing up. So it's not like we had video games or any kind of like luxurious toys. Like we had a piano and to me that was like a video game. I was like, oh wow, I got to the ending and I, I won and, uh, and it felt so good. And I, I got high off of that. You know, my parents were pretty disciplinary. So we had a lot of structure in the house, which I'm super grateful now because I think that's how I basically am able to get so much done. You know, I, I wouldn't call people lazy, but I, I think that a lot of people lack structure and, um, or they don't, they don't see things to the end. And I think that um, getting trained in classical music from such an early age kind of instilled that from, from the very beginning. So it's a big part of who I am now. I, I discovered punk rock music um, at the age of 12 or so. Well, my first cassette tape was Black Flag Damaged. Uh, which is a very, again, it's a very aggressive, so ag aggressive album. Like there's nothing that you could hum to <laughs> on, on that. But, um, but I think to, you know, there's a certain level of angst that, um, I was experiencing and to find like the soulmate music to that feeling, especially where I lived at, you know, I didn't live in the city. I lived out in the middle of nowhere and didn't have any friends that looked like me or that listen to the same music. And so it was like listening to Henry Rollins to me was like, Oh, uh, I'm not alone in this world, you know? <laughs> Misfits were like my introduction to playing guitar. And I remember I had, um, guitar lessons and I thought, Oh, well, it's a string instrument. So it'll be like piano, even though there are similarities, but it's not the same. And, uh, and so I was taking like classical guitar lessons, like classical guitar. Um, and then I remember one day bringing in a, a cassette tape, a Misfits uh, album to my guitar teacher. And he was so confused. He's like, why do you want to dumb, dumb yourself down? And I was like, well, I just want to be able to play this song. And so I could sing along to it, you know? And I just remember, um, like power chords were really hard for me, you know, like I was like, I was used to just doing all this and I was like, oh wait, even like the simple stuff is hard. But yeah, so I think like Some Kind of Hate was like a pretty big moment in my musical landmarks in time. <laughs> Disintegration is my favorite Cure album. My friend Tony and I, we always talk about that Disintegration is like the best rainy day album. Like anytime it rains, that's the album we put on. <laughs> I mean, I think that like most of my life up until I met my husband, I was in um, nothing but dysfunctional relationships. You know, I think um, like even when I started writing the album, it was in response. You know, I was seeing this guy who was in a band who lived overseas and um, he ended up writing me an album and delivering it to my house. And we had this like unrequited love type situation. And I remember sitting and listening to this album, which, you know, there was like a note on it that said, these are all the things that are easier, easier sung than said. What better way to respond than with an album, you know, and that's when I, I started taking voice lessons and started writing music. So I feel that like all I've really ever known is, um, like pain through love in a way, like, um, until, until I met my awesome husband and now it's like all that stuff's kind of left in the wind, but 
you know, when you listen to The Cure, it's like the, the poetry behind it. You never really get to know about the musicians themselves. Like I, that stuff, for some reason, doesn't really interest me about people's personal lives or anything. And so I, I just always was like, man, can you imagine being on the other side of, on the receiving side of this song? This girl must be so amazing, whoever she is. <laughs> One of my favorite bands to see play live is the Mars Volta because like they a, don't have an opener band. They play two hours straight and it's just like such intensity. And I, and I, I love every single Mars Volta album there is. So Cedric is an amazing, has this, an amazing stage presence and it's just so much energy. I think the last time I saw them was at the Palladium and I was like on the balcony, like overlooking and it was just like, you just really see the power of music um, and how it affects people. I really believe in like storytelling when it comes to like performing our songs. So I have a contortionist in our band, Bryn. She's amazing. And you know, we, we've actually worked pretty hard on our, our stage design, our sound design for our live shows. And um, yeah, and I plan on bringing it. I don't know if I have the same dance moves as Cedric, but <laughs> yeah.